After we completed the internet cafe and had that up and running, um, we had some spare budget, so we started building our apartment above it. Uh, as you can see, the concrete form that we already had made us a good base to take the walls up, plus we already had the steel, steel and cement posts, so carrying up our roof load was no problem either. The key to getting this done right is as you come up with your hollow blocks you increase your steel and the same as you bring your posts up. You shouldn't go a full high wall with a new construction or any construction for the wall uh, purely because you have movement as the mortar etc dries off which is where you'll have things um, falling over if you exceed the limitations within the actual formwork. All the steel work and the trusses were actually made on site from a small piece of the metal. Uh, they were all fabricated, treated, painted and installed on site. Project management is very important to this. So if you've got guys available from the cement work that basically can't work while there's stuff drying off, maybe the, the lintels or above doors etc. Get them onto the steel work, get them forming up the next pillars, painting this, this steel work that the welders are producing, etc. So that nobody is sitting around doing nothing. As you can see here, the pillar on the far right is being carried up and it's sort of in an open space. This is where we decided to carry over for a new bathroom um, to make a bit more room in the apartment, but obviously it's open space above the gate anyway. Um, but what we've done is basically carried some steel across, joined it up with the steel post coming up, and then put a piece of plywood down, formed a concrete base on there, and then we ripped the, the plywood out once it all dried below it. Next is a sequence of photos which will basically carry through the different stages. Um, I can't really say much on this because what you've got is we've built the frame which basically sets our gaps so like we know where our corners are, we've set out the gaps so it's all square and now the guys are basically just filling in everything with the bits and pieces, the extra pieces of steel, the extra hollow blocks etc, building everything up in stages. But well, I said you can't build hollow blocks straight up into one wall, it's not good for the hollow block, it's not good for the risk of it falling over either. So you're better off just doing it in stages, doing it right, swapping the guys around, they did it on the right hand side yesterday, do it on the left hand side today. This is a local method of plastering. It's basically using a thin layer of cement on the walls. It's labor intensive, it's prone to cracking. Um, strongly advise using boards instead, which are readily available. Um, a lot of the stuff I had was that people just weren't aware of how to do it or where to get the materials from. So this was our first major build and a lot of people say, no, there's no, we don't have any of this. What they mean is they don't know how to use it, which is why we end up with some old technologies. Building starts to take shape now and actually start to look like a building. This is the kitchen area, uh, which is basically being screened over. We're now adding the metal guttering and also some metal cabling for holding the insulation. As you can see here, the insulation sheets are now being fitted to give a bit of heat reflection. The roof was pre-painted, but if you haven't got a roof that's painted, we highly recommend uh, painting your roof for a bit of heat reflection. Now we're adding the plywood sheets that go around the perimeter of the building. As you can see also that the gap, the, the overhang is quite large. This is to give the building some shading. The roof in the building is also quite high to help with reducing heat buildup as well. 
the plumbing pipe work is left exposed for easy maintenance for the U-bent etc easily accessible from underneath the building and now begins the rendering of the outside with the same cement mix that was used on the interior walls this is the cold water feed being installed there'll be a concrete bed and then tiles put over the top not the way I would do it but it's very common in the Philippines to do it this way I would actually use plastic pipe next time around as you can see the electrical circuits going in and they're on separate circuits for one for lights one for aircon one for kitchen electrics and one for sockets this is the plywood ceiling going in the future builds we use gypsum and with that it's much faster with plastering ceiling painting than messing around with plywood brand new mahogany front door going in and we're just waiting for the window guys to arrive we installed a traditional concrete kitchen uh, which is basically formed over rebar and I've got another video on that I'll add later. Bit of a warning for others, if the guy that's going to do your uh, openings for your windows isn't the guy that's going to fit the windows, there's a good chance you're going to form them properly. I spent ages redoing all the cement and concrete for the windows because I had to knock some out, fill it, level it, etc. because they were so badly made. The throne room was complete with no issues and fully functional. Tiling on the other hand is another thing because I spent a bit of time showing the guys how to do it with adhesive, tiling adhesive etc and then they went back to the traditional set cement bed which wastes a lot of material but also is labour intensive. Pretty much finished, it was basically a case of getting it all furnished and the paint in the bathroom I was painting overnight ready for Ken to arrive in from Japan who was our first tenant. 